One, two, one, two. You know how we do. It's your boy BQ, episode number four of the B Side podcast. I've been ghost for a couple weeks. And as I stated earlier, doing the B-Side podcast, it's going to take me a little while to get into it in, in, a, in a consistent basis, consistent weekly basis. The YouTube uploads and everything a lot easier to do. The podcast, a little more difficult for me to be able to sit down, find the time to do it and edit. But I didn't want another week to go by. So I'm not going to talk too much about impact from last week. I've got some other topics on my mind and I'm going to I'm going to dive into them pretty quickly here. Not going to waste a whole lot of time. This is going to be a shorter episode of the podcast, but thank you for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. I really, truly do. The ones who support the B-side, who support the Impact Lounge, support the Total Nonstop Impact Podcast. And there's going to be a lot come January 1st when 2020 hits on the podcasting side of the house. So obviously I consider myself more of a YouTuber and the focus is always on the Impact Lounge YouTube channel, but on the podcasting side of the house, I've got some changes coming that is going to be exciting and I will announce more when we get a little bit closer to it. So I'm going to jump right into it because I want this to be a little closer. I'm not going to waffle around and talk about a bunch of other crap. I'm just going to kind of jump into the four topics that are on my brain right now. Um, The first one is the, if you follow me on Twitter, you've probably seen me bitch about this. And I don't work for Impact Creative. I'm not a writer. I'm certainly not a wrestler. I'm no expert. But as a YouTuber slash podcaster, I get to have an opinion and I get to be a critic. But I'm also a fan. A fan who I think uses a lot of common sense when watching the product. So the first thing I want to talk about is OVE's booking. I don't know what the hell they're doing with these guys. This is the only real consistent faction in the company right now. And Sammy Callahan's part of this faction, and he's the number one contender for the freaking world title. Why do these guys lose every time they go out there? Every week they lose. You got the X Division champion on the roster. Not in the roster, but in the faction. And they still don't win. A couple weeks ago, I was watching an episode of Impact. Not a couple, a little more than a couple weeks ago. You guys know what match I'm talking about. Madman Fulton versus RVD. RVD who's feuding with nobody. And was feuding with nobody at the time. How is he consistently throughout this match going to take Madman Fulton off his feet? I mean, he several times throughout this match took Madman Fulton off his feet. And then Dave Chris goes out there. And at first, because I love Dave Chris, at first I was like, okay, cool. You know, it's just a little more focus on these two guys for a little bit. That's cool. I can dig that. The match ends in a DQ or whatever. Dave Chris. Ruins the match. And a two-on-one assault on RVD, over 50 years old. RVD takes out both of these guys single-handedly. He took them out by himself. And you know why? So that they could get the cheap pop of a five-star frog splash. That was it. And what pissed me off so much, I shut the show off after this match. And I ended up finishing it a few days later. And I shouldn't be so dramatic as a fan. We're supposed to just watch the show and enjoy it, right? I was was so pissed off by this for some reason. Like, this really bothered me. And right before this match, there was a segment where Tessa is backstage with Tommy Dreamer. And she's complaining. I want to take out OVE. I can't, you know, I can't take this anymore, blah, blah, blah. So you would think, and this is, this is just what I'm saying. This is common sense as a fan speaking. All right. Not a wrestling expert. You would think because I'm looking, okay, bound for glory's coming. I'm just expecting some kind of build towards shit when I'm watching the show. So you would think 
that this whole segment where Tessa and Tommy Dreamer are just, oh, you know, we're going to take out OVE. You would think the next match, which is RVD versus Madman Fulton with Jay Chris in the corner, you would think, using some some sort of common sense, that those two would have left RVD damn near laying in his own blood. To further what the fuck Tess and Tommy Dreamer just said right before that. And then when that happens, then you can put on this EC, T- Tessa and ECW versus OVE match. Which they still put on the fucking match. But the problem is Tessa always wins. She always beats OVE. She's beaten Dave Christ three fucking times. She's beat Dave Christ. She beat Madman Fulton by disqualification. And she's beaten Sammy Callahan in tag team matches. She just hasn't beat him one on one, but her underdog story, like they were, they were building that underdog story. There's no underdog story anymore there. Now it's Tessa's going to beat OVE at, at all costs. Women empowerment. So previous to Tessa get, you know, this whole thing with Tommy dreamer backstage, Sammy Callahan, OVE, they just fucking beat those guys a week or two before that, they beat Sammy and Dave. Those two, Dreamer and Tessa, they beat Sammy and Dave. What the fuck is she complaining about? So then you get a match where it's Sammy and Jake versus Tessa and Dreamer. And I think that ended in disqualification. I honest to God don't remember. So then that leads to Tessa and Team ECW versus... OVE. Guess who fucking wins? Guess who fucking loses? Jake Chris loses again to Tessa in this match. And you can say oh, whatever. I, I get the I get the mindset where it's a tag team match. The champion didn't really lose, you know, because he's a part of a team. I I mean I I get that. But you have Jake lose. Sam, he's the X Division champion. Sammy's the number one contender for the world title. He fucking lose, is losing. I mean, you can't put Dave or Batman Fulton in anything at this point because they just lose all the time. They should be, you know, they're Ohio versus everything. They should be running shit. They should all have titles. Jake and freaking Fulton should be the tag team champion. Shit. Not Jake, but Dave. Dave and Fulton. So... It's it is, it's really bothering me as a, just as a fan. Like you know, I, I I honestly, God, yeah, I'm supposed to be a you know uh, uh, just enjoy it and but it's part of what I do is to be a critic. But this is bothering me. I I don't understand the the logic behind it at all. That a woman on a roster is pretty much single handedly beating this this faction, this stable. That's how I see it. Yes, yeah, she has help, but she has help with guy from guys in their fifties, random teams thrown together. And she's beating these guys. You know? I don't I don't know what is going on with OBE. I mean, you it's just like I said, with the common sense of one guy being the X Division champion, one guy being the number one contender for the world title, and then you got a monster on the roster. Why are they not running people over? Why shouldn't ever everyone should be coming at them? And at this point, the feud is just about Tessa one day beating Sammy Callahan. That's all this is because she beats him every other time. So what is she trying to prove? Because she, she just wants to beat Sammy Callahan one-on-one. So they, they've really killed the underdog story with this. This transitions into the next part of what I'm saying. It's, it's the dominance of the ECW guys. Now, you're going to say... Well, Tommy Dreamer doesn't beat anybody. You know, he, he's not beating the younger talent. And then you can say, well, Rhino hasn't necessarily, he beat Moose on Impact Plus, but, you know, he didn't, he didn't win the feud with Michael Elgin. So, I get that. RVD lost at Slammiversary to Moose. So, I'm not saying these guys go out there and win every single time. But you shouldn't put random... ECW teams together and beating the established OVE. On this last episode of Impact, RVD and Rhino came out there and beat the North. 
again, just like I did a couple of weeks ago, I shut the damn program off after this and I finished it a couple of days later. And it, yeah, I'm being dramatic. I'm being dramatic. I totally get that. But I mean, the North, we, do, we don't have LAX anymore. So you have to have a tag team that's dominant and beats everybody. There's no reason for the North to pick take a loss. I know what the reason is because they want a triple threat tag team match at Bound for Glory. They got to get RVD and Rhino on the fucking card. They announced to take you the uh, call your shot gauntlet. So we know we're going to see Dreamer in that. But I don't know the, the match ahead of time for Bound for Glory, the card. Because I don't look forward uh, to the spoilers like that. Like, I don't look at them ahead of time, I mean. I think that's what they're doing, though. They're trying to do a three-way tag team title match. Instead of just doing the North versus Willie, uh, Willie Mack and Rich Swan is what they should do. But either the company doesn't think that they can confidently put that match on a pay-per-view, or they've just said, we've just got to get these fuckers on the card because we're paying them, you know, we're paying them big bucks. So they got to be in Bound for Glory. So we got why? What better way to do it than giving them a clean win over the North? And then you have at the segment the uh, Brian Cage wedding, which I thought was fucking great. I was I was entertained. You have at the wedding a segment between RVD and Willie and Rich, and it's a comedy segment. And that's where it told me, okay, they're trying to do a three-way. But they had some kind of conversation. Oh, when we win the titles, you'll get the first shot. But it was done, it was kind of done in a comedy man comedic manner. There shouldn't be any comedy in something leading up to Bound for Glory. You know, so we'll see what they announce for the tag team title match, but I'm pretty sure that's what they're gonna do. If you look at Slam Aversary and they had, you know, at first it was the Rascals versus LAX, you know, they didn't Impact didn't have confidence putting LAX in a tag team title match on a pay-per-view, so they added the North to it. Obviously, the North had just won the titles. That's how they got you know factored in. But it seems like this is what they're doing, and there's no need for it. I'm not saying get rid of Rhino, get rid of RBD. I'm not. I'm not saying that. But I mean, are they really drawing viewers? Is it really that? important to factor them into the show and maybe it's in their contract they got to be on the pay-per-view i don't know maybe that's what it is but you got this call your shot battle royal there's 20 people who are going to be in it so why not throw those guys in there you can even have them last until the last four people bound for glory though speaking of this build this is a this is a complaining type episode for me you know i try to point out the good the positive that's really what the impact lounge is all about but here on the podcast i'm allowed to bitch a little bit more they do this every year with bound for glory where the build is totally phoned in but on the other side of that i can appreciate a build that has a bunch of first time matches I can appreciate a bunch of, uh, you know, a build where a bunch of these wrestlers aren't getting their hands on each other previous to the pay-per-view. So I can, I can appreciate that. If you look at Slammiversary, as good as the pay-per-view was, the matches that led up to it, I might be thinking of Rebellion, but it's, I want to say Slammiversary. They kept fighting each other. Um, I mean, kind of look at, kind of look what Brian Cage, a Rebellion took on Johnny Impact. How many fucking times did those times did those guys fight beforehand in tag team matches, multi-man matches, then LAX and Lucha brothers going at it. And then they kept doing versions of that, giving them a third partner. And there was just a lot of the same shit where everyone was fighting each other all the time. So I can appreciate it. I, I got to say that positive about this build. I can appreciate that with the exception of Cage and Callahan, which they're doing a good job with that build. But the exception of that, it's all first-time matches. It's all, you know, they're you're not seeing Marafuji and Elgin go at it. You're not seeing Moose and, and Shamrock go at it. They're keeping them away from each other because that's how you build heat. So, awesome. There is good to this. I'm not saying it's the worst build I've ever seen. 
But at the same time, like, it's also so random. Like, they're just announcing matches. This whole, like, Dr. Wagner versus the Rascals, like, what the fuck is that? If you're going to add that, add that at the end. You know, they always add some, like, whatever match towards the end. Like, that was announced as, like, the third match. And there's no build. There's no buzz up to it. We're not seeing the Rascals wrestling on TV. So, at this point, yeah, there's going to be some mystery partners. Like, no one really cares right now. The Moose and Shamrock stuff is great. The uh, main event stuff is great. What they did on this past episode of Impact with the wedding and then with Moose at the the dojo or the academy, whatever, Ken, Ken Shamrock, like... You are building those two up as your marquee matches, and you're doing a good job of it, Impact. Hell yeah. But these other matches, like the Tennille Dashwood and Taya, big thumbs down there. I've never cooled off on a signing this quickly as uh, Tennille Dashwood. Uh, she's most likely going to beat Madison and Kier in a triple threat here in a couple days. Or what's today? Thursday, so tomorrow. I'd be willing to bet. She's looked horrible. Her promos have been terrible. No passion behind anything she's been doing. So I'm I'm super disappointed as a fan uh, watching her right now. And I hope they don't put the title on her. I, I mean, build something up with her first. I think, I really think if she sticks around at Impact, they're going to have to turn her heel. Like out of necessity. And then maybe her character will, will take off. But don't be surprised if she's turned heel out of necessity because... She is, there's no momentum behind her as a baby face right now. And then the Call Your Shot Battle Royal was super random. This should be our, when I say our, our Impact family, this should be our Royal Rumble. But the last, you know, the Bound for Glories where they did the Bound for Gold, like those meant nothing ultimately. It was a bunch of guys who who were never going to get a shot at the world title thrown into a match. The winner wins, doesn't win the world title. You know, Eli Drake won it. He was someone at the time where, of course, we're like, oh, yeah, you know, push this guy, push this guy. But nobody won. So the, the, they mean nothing. So I'm really concerned at this. I'm glad it's a 20 man match. We're probably going to get Dreamer in it. We're going to get that silly Japanese dude with the mask that comes out. Um, we might get Richard Justice. You know, we're going to get some bullshit in there. Hopefully, we get a nice debut. But. Even though this should be, this should be like the semi-main or third, you know, this it should mean something. It should be our Royal Rumble. But my gut tells me it's going to be our Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Just let's get everyone on there. The winner, it means nothing. Yeah, they get to get a title, you know, a title shot. But what's that meant in the past for Gauntlet? It's nothing. So please, Impact, please make this fucking important. I'm begging you as a fan. I know all the fans are begging you. Make this, please make this matter so that's something we look forward to at Bound for Glory every year. Because this can be something they, that's a you know perennial thing. And then they invited Joe Madden, the Cubs manager, to give man, you know, to a big ringside and give managerial tips to the winner. What? That's what makes it sound. That alone, that they're doing that, that's what makes it sound like this This means nothing. That's what This is what makes it sound ridiculous to me. Like, is, is Joe Madden going to take someone to the Impact World Championship to the main event at the next pay-per-view, you know? Is he going to be a manager on TV? Of course not. So, the build is weird. It, it's, it's just a weird build. I'm okay with, with it being kind of random. But not as not this random. And then you know, like when Michael Elgin, I was I, I'm excited for Michael Elgin versus Marafuji. Like that's one of my top. Like I cannot wait to see that. But you, why'd you announce that in Mexico? You know, you could have done that at the Vegas tapings. Like you, they announced so much. I guess this is the problem: is that they they built so much of it and announced so much of it in Mexico. Like that's the wrong place to do it. You got to do it in front of a U.S. audience to make it. Maybe 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 it's a smaller audience. I get that, but you got to do it in front of the U.S. audience. You know, so I think Bound for Glory is going to be kick ass. But I I want to say there's probably one or two more matches we're going to get announced. You know, the tag team title match, Eddie Edwards versus Ace Austin at this point is at Road to Glory on Friday. This is the best built angle they've had. 
in the company storyline wise as far as like long term and it's not on the pay-per-view maybe it is the problem is that they've already wrestled this will be their third time wrestling third or fourth i want to say the yeah cuz ace won a couple by disqualification right so this will be like their third time if they wrestle the pay-per-view it'll be their fourth time what do, what do you, where are you going here with this they're not going to end it at the twitch impact plus show you know but that's like the one match you would think we were getting on Bound for Glory for sure with some kind of stipulation. I'm glad we're not getting a monster's ball, though, because we're, we, we've seen so much of that. But I wouldn't be surprised we get those two in some kind of no DQ, falls count anywhere, hardcore shit. Who the hell knows? Um, Bound for Glory is going to be good, though. It's definitely going to be good. And hopefully when we see the pay-per-view, the build will make more sense. But I think, I, I just hope they're trying something different. But with the other pay-per-views, it's like they built so much on the show. Mention Impact Plus a second ago. This is my last topic. Impact Plus versus Twitch. I just started getting into watching these shows again. When they first came out with the concept, they wanted to you know, get rid of the one-night-only idea. Because those sucked. And they kind of kept the theme going for a while. And then it was kind of like, oh, well, we're going to get like two extra pay-per-views a month. And we're going to partner with these companies and maybe scout some talent, reach out and touch some new fans in the process. I mean, everything's been the same followership wise, viewership wise, buzz wise. And you had some matches where the local town did beat the impact guys. Now they don't really, I start watching these again. So the ones I've seen, they don't beat the impact guys now. And there was more, there were more people in the crowd for a lot of them. So these Twitch ones though, they did, you know, they did the shows in Oklahoma last month and the Twitch show must've had a hundred people in the crowd. And there was fans on Twitter who were like, yo, impact wrestling, you haven't sold any tickets for this. Like, why aren't you canceling this event? So instead they did a show with not many people in it. It was a decent show too. But not many people. And then the crowd kept showing the people that how empty the place was. Not the crowd, but the camera kept showing how empty the place was. But then you have the Impact Plus show the next night. And it's a much better show. A lot more people there. And then when you have the Twitch shows, you can't hear anything going on. Like, I mean, even the Lucha, Lucha Underground show. Like, when people are on the microphone in the middle of the ring talking, like, you can't. It, it's like you're just watching from someone's phone. You can't make out anything being said on the mic, hardly. Unless you're really well spoken, like Rohit Raj, you cut one that you could hear him clearly. But if you, you've got a deeper voice or a more jumbled voice, like you can't hear anything going on. But then with Impact Plus, it's like watching an episode of Impact. Like you can hear just fine. So when these shows come out, it's like you know you're gonna watch some crap on the Twitch, most most likely. In comparison to the Impact Plus shows, which are always much better. That the Audio has been horrible traditionally for both in one way, shape, or form. And that's with, you know, maybe you're watching it and the announcing is too loud or it's distorted or you can't even hear anything for the first match. So hopefully they're fixing this with, I think they're getting new audio engineers and all that. Hopefully, hopefully they're fixing this, but they have lost so many viewers because the early shows on Twitch were unwatchable, unfucking watchable. And now they're getting, they're getting watchable now. They, they definitely are a lot better. But these Twitch shows are so much worse than the Impact Plus shows. And that's the free show. Because you have to be a paid subscriber, right? To Impact Plus to watch the Impact Plus specials. So this as low as the Twitch audience has been for these, you know there's less for Impact Plus. They should have way more people watching these. Way more people should care. And when I was at Warrior Wrestling last month, you know, not far from where they're doing Bound for Glory. This place was pretty packed. Lots of Impact stars on a roster. They weren't promoting Bound for Glory there. Yeah, Brian Cage cut a promo after, and they were selling Bound for Glory tickets there. But when I walked in, there wasn't, you know, promotional uh, flyers or anything like, you know, hey, like, if you like the stars of Impact, Bound for Glory's coming up, you can buy tickets at the intermission. No fucking clue. So how, you know, with these partnerships, are they really 
partnering and trying to grow the company or are they counting on these other promotions to promote and build the show for them and to put the people in the audience? You know, it seemed like the early shows were more of a partnership and now it just seems like Impact's just letting them do whatever. And if they do a good job at it, cool. If they don't, they don't, <laughs> you know? But Twitch is the free one. Twitch is the one where you should be putting on really good shows and making people want to subscribe to Impact Plus. If you like this show, well, the Impact Plus shows are even better. But the Twitch show has to be good. It can't be like crap like they've been they've been doing where the matches are uninspired and they mean nothing and you can't hear. You know, I'm not saying they're t like god awful terrible. I still watch them. I'm still entertained enough because I'm an Impact fan. But you're not bringing in new fans watching these Twitch shows. It's just like we have a agreement with Twitch, and here here's your product. I was looking into how much I think Impact makes with Twitch. So you can be a streamer, like someone who has a gaming channel, and that you know you get paid for people who subscribe to your channel, and I think you get a little bit of ad money. And then you have the bigger companies like Impact and like large companies and corporations. They they have part, a completely different partnership deal where they get paid anywhere from one cent to 10 cents for, actually, I think it was 10 cents to a dollar. I think that was correct, 10 cents to a dollar for for each viewer who watches for an hour. So if you're watching Impact for two hours, they're making a couple bucks off you. You know what I mean? So the more people you have watching the entire show, or at least an hour of it, it the better for your for your pocket, for the revenue that you make at the end of the day. So you would think with the Twitch shows, also they say, okay, we're going to make these shows good so people actually want to watch the whole thing. Now, I will say when I was watching it, I didn't see that many people dropping off on the last one. But it did. It didn't cap out past past like eleven hundred people. The uh, the Oklahoma one. You know, so for the most part, I think the, the you know the hardcores are watching them. But if you're getting paid per person who watches for an hour of your programming, then make make people want to watch it. The flow is good. You know, like it goes from match to match to match. There's no BS in between, so that's good. But make the shows better. Make make them sound better. Do something, please. Don't be so much worse than the Impact Plus shows because you're not converting people over to Impact Plus who might be giving it a shot because you, you still see in the chat room, there's people like, whoa, this is Impact now? Because the Twitch shows are always in high school gyms and shit like that. People are thinking that's what Impact Wrestling has gone to. They don't understand these are house shows. So you're not impressing the new people who do log on. Yeah, there's trolls in there and all that shit, but marketing folks, grab these people. Grab the people who are watching the free product and try to sell them the paid product. Thanks for checking in with the B side folks. I'm not going to review last week's impact because we're getting pretty close to the new episode. All I will say is the moose stuff. Awesome. The Brian cage wedding. Awesome. You know, um, RVD and Rhino winning. Not awesome. But the rest was kind of cool. Thanks for checking in. Subscribe. Like. Review, comment, all that good shit. And I'm going to talk to you soon. Peace.